Good afternoon, evening, or morning, Twitch. Bolly Firesmith here, joined with Serpent's son, my daughter. Um, we're going to be doing a 1v1 um, Pathfinder campaign that I actually wrote this morning. Um, in took, took about three hours to sit down and write a bunch of information. Um, so I'm going to jump right into it. Um, Serpent Sun, if you want to uh, jump in and uh, introduce your character. Yeah, sorry, just quick recap me. How much do I know about my character? Um, you know a lot about the original, um, and you're just starting to get a sense for what you are. I'll do an introduction once you are done with your uh, chat. All right, so hello, everyone. My name is Tella. I am a 12-year-old human girl. I I think, I mean, I'm not really sure anymore. Um, I was just hanging out with my friend outside. We were playing ball, and she kicked it out into the road. I chased it, and everything went black. And, um, well, I'm awake now. And I just, I feel different feel stronger, I feel muscly. You know, muscles are cool, but uh, I didn't have these muscles last time I was awake, and it's it's kind of freaking me out. I'm not really sure anymore. Um, I'm Tella. I'm a 12-year-old Dello human underscore girl. cheered. X100. Hello, hello. Thank you, Dello. Welcome in. Thank you for the biddies. Um, you're just in time, we're introducing the characters. Um, this is Tella, to my right. Um, I am Bali, as you know. Um, so now I'm going to dive into a quick explanation, and then we're going to dive right into the game. You ready, Tella? Yeah. Perfect. Should I call you new Tella or just Tella? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fine, I guess. Sorry, dad jokes are allowed my daughter and all um so, okay so you awaken in a room that is black as pitch the last thing you recall is chasing after your favorite ball that your best friend kicked into the street after that all you remember is darkness you do however feel very strange you seem to be about a foot shorter than uh in your pa in um when you the darkness hit um, you seem to have broader shoulders, and um, you, your feet seem to land a bit harder in this darkness. They seem to be a, a little less lithe than you're used to being. Um, so you are in the middle of a, a room, and all you see is darkness. Your eyes are starting to adjust, um, so you do see a little bit, um, but it is just a large square room that is full of dark. What will you do? I guess I'll, I'll just start calling out. I mean, that's probably not the best idea, but I have the keys for now. So I'm calling out into the darkness for my friend, and also looking around for the ball because that feels important in this moment for some reason. So, so as you call out, all you hear is echoing off of all the walls around you, coming back to you. You don't hear anything outside of that. You don't notice any movement in the area. Um, your eyes do start to become a little more adjusted, um, and you start seeing some strange tones of gray as if you could see in the dark, but not like you couldn't make out precise what's going on. And um, how's this making you feel that your eyes are adjusting and you're starting to see tones of gray and instead of just pitch? Short, clumsy, and colorblind. <laughs> I try and get towards the nearest wall. Kind okay. Um, you, stand you, up. You, you stumble up towards a wall um, and stand yourself up. Um, and you do notice that it's pretty cold. Um, it's made out of stone. Uh, it, it does seem to run from north to south. Um, oh, what just happened there? My screen share just died. What the heck is going on? What is going on here? Okay, sorry about this, guys. I 
don't know why that minimized, but the music should be back now. <laughs> and we should be back in place. Yes, we are. Good. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so it seems to... Um, the wall seems to run from north to south, so you seem to have hit an eastern wall here. Um, there doesn't seem to be any entrances or exits on this wall. Do I have a feel for about how big the room is after kind of like prying out into the darkness? Um, so, so you have a sense that it's about a 15 by 15 foot room. It's not giant, but it's not tiny. Um, okay. It seems to be a little bigger than uh, the blackness suggests should be but it seems to be pitch as black. Okay, I guess I'll just keep walking forward with one hand on the wall till I get to a corner or some uh, such. Are, are you heading north or south? Feel. Uh, I will head south, and I'm also trying to get a feel for the roughness of the rock trying to maybe tell some things about it. I mean, I don't know how much I know about rocks, but rocks are pretty cool. Maybe, maybe feeling the rock will help me. Okay, so as you start heading down to the right from where you were you were standing, um, you do pretty quickly come to a corner. Fifteen feet isn't all that far, um, and you do notice that it, to your right it does run again. Um, the the rock feels a little smooth as if it's hewn, um, but it does seem to have mortar spots as if it's, as if it's like laid brick or uh, laid stone. Okay, so it's not natural. Hmm. So I'm in the southeastern corner of the room then. Uh, I'm kind of gonna put hands on both corners, see if there's any give anywhere within reach, and make my way along the southern wall during the same. Okay. As you start heading along the southern wall, you do come across um, a doorway. Um, the, the door seems to be made out of a rough wood. Um, uh, it's pretty rough to the touch, and it's uh, it's not as cold as the stone was. So you seem to have stumbled into a door that could be utilized. Okay, I'm guessing I can't really see anything like light around the edges of this. Um, I'm gonna feel around for like a knob or a keyhole maybe loose stones around the bottom somewhere. Yeah, so as you're feeling around, um, the door actually creaks open a little bit. Um, and a little bit of light pours in as if it was from a fire or something from the other side of the room. Um, it's very dim, it's not too bright, but uh, you get the sense that um, there is now a small bit of light and you can start seeing a bit more color within your world. Not I'm kind of try and peer, like push the door open a little more, maybe peer around to see if there's anything that needs to be dealt with immediately down that corridor. Okay, so as, as you peer, um, open the door a bit more and look straight down, you notice that um, down this hallway that you're um, standing outside of, um, there are uh, porch scones on either wall um, running down the length of the hall, and then at the end it seems to jut out to the east again. Um, and then back into darkness where you can't see. Okay. And just opening the door more, let me see more of the room that I was in. Yep. Are there any other doors or objects of interest that I can see just kind of by looking back? So as, as you look back, you see on the opposite side, um, there is another door. It seems to be the same rough hewn wood pattern. Uh, noth nothing really outstanding about it. It just seems to be a wood door. Okay. I am going to go investigate that door. Okay. Um, so I, as you walk up to the door, you put your hands on it. It does seem to uh, not open as easily as the other one. Um, what will you do? I'll give it a good hearty shove, I think. Okay, so as, as you give it a good... Can you give me a strength check, please? Oh, you went dark. 
There we go. <laughs> Auto camera. <laughs> A five? Is that with your strength? Oh, um, no. Sorry, is this the regular mod or temporary mod that makes sense? Uh, just straight strength, so whatever your plus is on strength. Okay, so it's a nine. A nine? Okay, so you, you give it a hearty shove. Um, it, it doesn't seem to give um, very easily. But it does seem to creak just a little bit. Um, there does seem to be a little given in, and it also does not seem to be locked. But it seems to be harder to open. So, is it like enough that I could see if there's light coming in from the other side, or no? Um, a, a very small sliver has opened, and it does look like it's the same type of light coming from the other side. Um, something made by a fire, and you could probably presume that it is torchlight. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the to the easy door, and I'm gonna snag a torch off the wall on my way, if that's possible. Like out the easy door, which keep going down that hall. Yeah, so so you head down um, through the southern door, um, grab one of the torches off of the the wall. It comes out of the scone really easily, um, and you head down the passageway. And as you turn and start heading east, you see a a door in front of you. It is a very dark wood. It seems to have a little bit of a musky smell to it, but it seems to be a lot smoother, and there seems to be some bars across it made out of what you presume to be iron. I'm just gonna try, I guess, is it turning the handle and pushing and or pulling? Um, yeah, so, so the handle, it's just like a little ring um, that's on it, um, and as you try to push it, it doesn't really move. And does pulling? So as you be a different result. Yes, <laughs> it does. <laughs> uh, as you pull on the handle, um, the door opens um, quite simply. Um, so it just opens up, and in front of you, um, you see another room. Um, Right in the center of the room, there are three pillars. They're little pedestals that stand about four feet tall. Um, and on the center one, you see a statue made out of gold of a pegasus. That looks pretty. Reminds me vaguely of some of the movies I used to watch when I was a little taller than four foot three. <laughs> I think I should not touch this Pegasus. Uh, I'll... Is there anything beyond this? Sorry, this car. Uh, I didn't... Are there, like... Sorry, is there, like, another door beyond these pedestals, or is this just a room with pedestals? Okay, can you give me a perception check? More than eight... Oh, is my perception on this page? Is that just wisdom? Uh, no, you do have a perception. It's in this skills setting. Oh, okay. Uh, you're a plus five. Is that skill ten? Okay, so I. As you're looking, you do notice um, underneath the uh, the pillar that has the Pegasus, there is a little tiny label that says Pegasus. And on the other two pillars, you also notice that there are labels. They don't seem to make sense to you. Um, they just seem to be random letters. Um, if you tried to sound them out, um, they would probably be no guard. And no purg. So they don't really make sense to you. On the other side of the pillars, um, as you're walking around looking at these labels, you do notice that there's a little passageway behind the center pillar, about five feet away from the pillar at the back wall, right in the center. Not Pegasus, more like Pegasus. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go and try and peel these labels off the pillar. 
for no reason other than 12 year old chaotic energy okay um so you you do try to peel them off they seem to be fastened very tightly to it um and they do not give at all so they seem to be okay, stuck well, on there pretty well now that i'm right in front of the pillar i'm gonna try and examine the center pillar see if there's anything off about it okay so uh, as you were looking at the center pillar you do notice that there is a golden pressure plate that the pegasus is sitting on top of that seems to be depressed and as you're looking around you notice that the uh the one that says no guard looks like it's made out of platinum and it seems to be a little more raised than the other one oh. and on the southern pillar the one that does say no perg mm -hmm. is a silver one that looks the same as the platinum one it's raised up and it doesn't seem to be depressed you yeah, like loose stones about um give me a perception to see if you notice anything that's another 13. another 13. uh you do not see any uh stones lying about it looks like it's a pretty clean room okay well maybe not the best idea but i'm gonna kind of try and put my hand on the golden plate and just keep it at that level while i pick the pegasus up so i can kind of like look at it a bit and then put it back give me a strength check oh boy um that, that's a six that's so. six so uh, you put your hand on the plate and you try to pick up the uh the pegasus statue but it does not budge it seems to be too heavy for you to lift or held there by some other means. Okay, I'll just keep this in the back of my mind and proceed to the little pathway that you said was behind the center pillar. Okay, and you're just going to walk straight into the pathway? I guess. Okay, can you roll me a reflex check, please? Okay. <laughs> Natural one. Natural one. Okay, so you are going to take full damage here. Um, so as you walk into this hallway, all of a sudden, out of the two walls on either side of you, shoot four darts. And they strike you in various parts of your body, causing 12 points of poison damage. Okay. Outside of that, um, right after that happened, you heard a click come from the walls, and it seems that something closed off, so I, you feel pretty safe going through this uh, passage any point in the future. And as you continue on, um, you walk back into, after about five feet, another room that looked the exact same size as the one behind you, minus the pillars. I'm gonna be a little more careful walking out of this passage than I was walking in. I'm just gonna like okay. hold my torch up, kind of look at the walls, look at the floor. I'm not thinking to look at the ceiling at this point, but okay. Some Can you give me a perception check to see how uh, how you're looking? Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, so as you're looking around, you do notice at the back wall um, that's basically directly in front of the pathway you just came out of and got hit by all these darts. There is a, a, a little outline. I mean, you can't really tell what it is, um, but it seems to be there is something there. You just don't really know what it is. Okay, sorry. Was that in the wall or the floor? On the wall. Or on the wall. Yeah, it just seems to and be it's just like... a, a little bit different than the rest of the wall, but it seems to be blended pretty well, but you can't really tell. Okay. I'm just gonna like run really fast and kind of try and jump through that doorway sort of thing so I'm not touching the floor as I'm passing through. The one that you just came through? Uh, going into the new room. You're already in the new room. Oh. You got hit by the darts, walked into the new room, and then this and is where you noticed on the back wall some weird uh, 
spot that looks a little different than the rest of the wall, but you can't really tell too much what Okay, it I'm going to stand back and kind of, like, try and poke it with the torch. Okay, so um, you, you poke it with the torch, and the torch goes out. Um, nothing else really happens. Um, there are torches throughout this room, though, so it isn't pitch black. It is, does seem to be glowing with some light, so losing that torch didn't really do much. But no trap okay. has sprung. Yep, slap it this time. Okay, so as you, as you push your hand against it, um, can you give me a strength check? Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Okay, so you slap your hand against this, and a little tiny slot that seems to be about five foot by five foot just seems to push back, opening up into a secret passageway. Secret coming. <laughs> And out in front of you, it goes for about five feet, and then it seems to disappear down south um, into shadows. Right, I'm going to grab a new torch and mosey on in there, maybe like glancing around at the walls, a little more cautious than previously, but not so cautious as when I approached this wall. Okay, so as you enter into the hall, um, it is lined by um, torches as well. Um, and as you walk down, nothing seems to come out. But um, as you head south, after about 20 feet, um, it opens up into a very large cave system. Um, it seems to be about 120 feet to the wall behind you, like in front of you. The ceilings seem to be about 60 feet tall, and it seems to be about 80 feet wide. In the southwest side, there is a large lake with an island in the middle. Okay. All, all about in this, in this, there are stalagmites and stalactites um, hanging and rising from the ground in the ceiling. Um, and wherever those are, it seems to be pretty dark up into in the in the ceiling area. Um, but the rest of it does seem to be pretty light. It seems like there's some just some unnatural light cast throughout this cavern. It's a little creepy. There's no there's no sense of where this um, light is emitting from. It just seems to be ever present. Okay, and do I get any sort of sense that I'm being watched or that I've been noticed by anything? Uh, give me a stealth check. It would be straight decks if you don't have any points in stealth. I think it's 12. Yeah, it's 12. 12? Total. Okay. Um, nothing seems to have noticed you. Um, you. You do seem to be not making a lot of noise. You've just walked into this tunnel, so you, you're just really taking in uh, the sights around you. Is there, like, a clear path towards the lake without dipping into the places that are pretty dark? Um, all the darkness that you're noticing all seem to be on the ceiling. So yes, there there isn't. It, it seems to be ever bright, um, like a dim light everywhere throughout the entire floor area of the cavern. And then when it gets up into the into the hanging rocks, it seems to have little pockets of darkness in, above you. Okay, am I able to get to the lake, avoiding running under this? Um, yeah, give me one more stealth check, real quick. Uh, 13. 13? Okay, so as you start picking your way through towards the lake, you do hear a noise from up above. Uh, <laughs> and as you look up, two giant bats come swooping down from the ceiling. 
They seem to be looking around. They don't see you yet, but they seem to have noticed some presence within the the area. What would you like to do? Uh, I do have weapons. Yep. I think I'll kind of just take one of them out, I guess. The, um... Ogre hook. Okay. I just kind of have it at the ready. Okay, and, and I'll at, make an effort to move a little quieter. At this movement, as you pulled out the ogre hook, it makes a little sh as you pull it out, and the, the bats, having such good hearing, zero in directly on you and roll for initiative. Roll the 15. Sorry, and then I add to that. Initiative would be plus six. Plus a twenty-one. Twenty-one. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so you are actually first to act. So as these two giant bats come swooping down at you, um, what are you going to do? How close are they? Um, they're within fifteen feet of you. Okay. Um. I will turn myself towards whichever one is on the left, I suppose. Okay. And swing the ogre hook. Well, I guess I'll get closer to it. Um, is it out of my height ability to... Um, no, they've swooped oh. down and they're coming in at you. They're about 15 feet away. So if you're going to move in towards them, um, that's not I a problem. I think I will, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so give me your swing. Uh, 17, am I adding anything to it? Uh, yeah, so you're using your ogre hook? Yes. So it would be your... Uh, so you actually get two swings with this ogre hook. The first one would be a plus 12, the second one would be a plus 7. Um, so with your first swing... <laughs> is a... Okay. Ah, 17, so... Definitely a hit. <laughs> so you roll your damage now. 1d10 plus 9. Uh, roll a 3. A 3? So, so 12. Okay, so your first swing comes across. Now do your second attack. That one. That one. Okay, so your first swing comes down, and it it cuts across the bat real hard, and it kind of call cries out like ah! as it takes twelve points of damage, and it seems to be very badly hurt. Um, but then when you come back up with your second swing, um, you you just totally miss it. You seem to have not be used to your body yet, um, and you miss um, that second swing. Um, and then that bat is going to swing in on you with a bite attack. Uh, and he does a 16. Does that hit? I see a 17. So 16 misses. So as he comes in to bite at you, he just kind of misses, uh, misjudging your height. <laughs> and just kind of swoops over top. Uh, missing you. The second one comes swooping in, and that one is a 21, which I believe is a hit. And as it bites you, it takes a pretty good chunk out of you of 13 hit points. Uh, sorry, 11 hit points. Okay. And then we're back to you. Uh, I think I'm just going to try and brace myself and yell as loudly as I can to kind of try and disorient these bats, because they probably are more sensitive to sound than to sight. Just try and scare them off. I don't really feel like beating up large animals right now. 
Okay, give me an intimidation check. Total 13. Total 13. Um, so the one that is damaged seems to uh, become shaken um, and has lost the motivation to attack, but the, the one that hasn't been hit yet doesn't seem to take any effect from this yell. Um, do you have any bonus actions? Sorry. Alright, you didn't. Yeah, that's okay. Um, do do. Yeah. And just a reminder, you are a barbarian, so you can go into rage. Okay. Yeah. Uh, da, da, da. No, you don't seem to have any bonus actions. Okay, so you have shaken one, but the other one is going. Now the shaken one is going to attempt to break from its shaken status, and successfully does, um, with a 23 uh, will save. Um, however, that does just mean it can roll into its attack, and its attack is a 23. And it nips at you again. <laughs> and I just got maximum damage with a uh, 13. Okay. And the second one swoops in with a 16. That does not uh, hit. Okay. So we are back up to the top of the order with you. Okay, with the order of Yeah, bats I tried. We're, we're back to slashing, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'll swing at the damaged one. Okay. Uh, so the first roll was a 9 plus 12. Um, it's 20. That hits. Okay. And I rolled a nine, and it's plus nine, so eighteen. Eighteen. Tell them to explain what you did with this overhook first slash. Uh, I think I clipped a full wing off with that one. Okay, so as as you swing again, um, you know these bats have just been nipping at you and. Um, you tried to be nice and just scare them off, but it didn't work. So you just swing your overhook and you cleanly cut one of its wings off and it spins off and lands into a lump on the floor. Um, what will you do with your second attack? I, I'm turning into bat number two. Okay. Uh, okay, the dice kind of got stuck between my book and laptop and it does have a number up. Should I take it or reroll? Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to your discretion. I can't see what you've done. I mean, it's it's straight up. So that was a 3 plus 7 is 10. I don't think that hits. A 10 does not hit, no. Um, now, I, I did forget. As a bonus action, you can drink. Uh, you can quaff a potion if you need to. Okay. I think I'm fine for now. I had a lot of things. And I'm still having a lot more than this, too. Um, so with the one dead, the second one is going to come in and try to bite you again and totally misses you with the nine. So we're back to you. All right. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not backing off from this fight anymore. I'm kind of excited not to send in bat number one spinning <laughs> in the way only a child can be. Uh, so overhook first swing is 5 plus 12, 17. 17 hits. Roll your damage. Uh, 4 plus 9, so 13. 13. So as you swing through, it does look pretty bloodied. Let's get your second roll. Alright. Uh, that would be 11 plus 7, 18. 18 does hit. Yep, roll your damage again. Uh, three. And that 
face to me. Yeah. It would be the same plus damage because it's the same weapon. Yeah. So 12. 12. Uh, explain what happens with the second one as you kill the second one and come out of initiative. I'm, a... I'm really like the vibe of just chopping a wing off. I think that's kind of my, that's my flair, but I'm going for the other wing this time for balance. Okay, so th this time, instead of the left wing, you're going for the right wing, and you go up and you do a double slash, one up, one down, with this ogre hook. And as you come down on the second cut, it cleanly cuts off and brings part of its shoulder with it. And it Ooh. just kind of sprays blood as it cries out <laughs> and crashes into a pile on the ground. And you have successfully defeated those creatures that all were right. all around. I'm just gonna like stop for a second, catch my breath, kind of like look around, listen a bit. Like, are there any other strange creatures that I need to beat up today? Or are we gonna? Hmm. So, uh, give me give me a perception check. Twenty four. Twenty four. So as you as you're looking around. Um, you notice on the middle of the island there is a large treasure chest. Um, it seems to be about 60 feet of water between you and the island, though. Um, so it does seem like it's pretty far away to get there. Um, but you don't notice any other movements or anything else within this cave. Okay. And as you hear, uh... there's a lot of water drifting in, the, in around. So I'm like by the shore of the lake now then? Um yeah, you're you're within fifteen feet of the shore. Um you're pretty close to it, but it does you can see across and it's about sixty feet of water. Okay. And the nearest door was back by There was no door, it was just a hallway that just opened up into this um cavern that you are okay, now inside so of. The Pegasus room is the nearest door. Yeah, the one that went back into the little secret door that you found. Hmm. I'm trying to think if it's worth it to backtrack to try and rip a door off its hinges so I have something to float with. Uh, probably not. I'm 12. I don't like walking. <laughs> I'm going to go up to the shore of the lake, try and get a feel for how deep it is right at the shore line. Okay, so right at the shore, it seems to go out for about five feet and then drop into what seems to be too deep to touch. Okay, okay. And how cold is it? Um, it's It seems to be pretty much the same as what the air temperature is. It doesn't seem to be freezing cold, but it's not, like, hot or warm. It's just kind of there. Okay. I'm guessing I'd probably improve my chances of getting across this if I left some things this for. And I think I may do that. I'm going to keep the ogre hook, but I want to put down the great axe in the earth right there. Okay, so you, you take the, the great axe and you put it down on the shore beside you. You take the big huge hammer earth breaker, you place it down on the on the ground of this as well. And are you going to wade out into the water and try to swim across? I think I'm going to wade into the water. I'm not going to try and swim across yet. I'm just going to, in the shallow part, kind of like try and get a feel for how buoyant I'm going to be before I take the plunge. Okay, so as, as you walk out, it seems to be, you know, just normal water. Um, seems to not not be dense or light it doesn't seem you seem to float decently well um what would you like to do i'm gonna get back out of the water okay i'm gonna go over to one of the still like mites the ones it's the like pigs that are in this area i think so i can't remember anyway the ground one i'm gonna try and break the tip off one of them and like chuck it as far as I can into the water. Give me a strength check. 14. 14? 
Um, so you, you throw it and it goes out about 14 feet and plunks into the water and um, ripples go out from this uh, chunk of the the rock that you throw in there and there doesn't seem to be any other movement at all in this water other than the ripples that are now happening. Uh, how much does a potion of cure serious wounds heal? Uh, cure serious wounds is a three d eight damage. Okay, I think I will drink one of those to be safe. Okay, give me the three d eight, or would you like me to roll it? Uh, I'll do it. Four, three, one. So eight points eight. of damage, you have healed. And then so I, as, as you drink this uh, potion, um, you didn't even know what it was. You just pulled it out and you chug it back. And you start to feel like, uh, you know, just being a 12-year-old, you're just like, hey, it was on me. It must be good. And you drink it and um, you feel a little refreshed. Um, a little less hurt than you were before, so you, you're a little more limber in your muscles and you're uh, feeling ready to take on the world. That's a good way to describe it. All right. Just kind of like toss the bottle to the side and I'm going for it. I'm going to swim to this island. Okay. Um, to get across the 60 feet, I will need two swim checks. So give me the first one for the first 30 feet into the water. Uh, 19. 19. Okay, give me your second one for the next 30 feet. 29. Okay, so you successfully just power through this 60 feet of swimming. You don't even feel any amount of tiredness from this, this cross at this water. And you, you amble yourself up and you're out on the little island that seems to be about a little five foot pad with a chest sitting in the middle that's taking up most of this island. Uh, I'm I'm going to just kind of stand by the shore and examine it. I am awfully suspicious after the bats and the darts. Okay, give me a perception check. Nine. Nine? Yeah. It seems to be just a chest. Nothing suspicious about it. Good enough for me. I'm going to try and look away. <laughs> okay, you open up the chest. And um, as you open it up, nothing happens. But inside of the chest, you do notice a black statue that's in the shape of a dragon. A blue statue in the shape of a griffin. A yellow statue in the shape of a cockatrice. A green statue in the shape of a trent. And a red statue in the shape of a gelatinous cube. The yellow one again? A cockatrice. cockatrice? Yep. Okay. I see that brain spinning. Happy are they? <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to reach right in there. I'm going to try and pick them up. I'm like, oh, cool, new toys. Uh, how heavy are these things? Um, so they seem to be about a pound each. They're not very heavy. Um, there's no no resistance. You pick them all up, and uh, what would, would you just want to put them into a backpack, or you do have one on you? Oh, yeah. Okay, sure. so you take these, and you stuff the, the statues into the backpack and throw it back onto your shoulders. Um, and nothing happens. Okay. Um, I was just thinking back, I can't remember what color platinum actually is. For some reason in my mind it's black, but, uh, the no guard kind of seems like a scrambled dragon. So I'm going to kind of pause for a moment and be like, do I have the energy to swim these 60 feet right now? I'm 12, yeah, probably. And I'm going to paddle my way back across here. 
Yeah, same as the way out. Give me your two swim checks. Twenty-one. Yeah, first thirty feet, you have no problem. You power through this swim. And twenty-four. Yeah, you don't even bother. Your twelve-year-old brain thinks you have all the vigor of the world if a 12 year old and you just power across this and you get to the other side and you shake the water off of you um you're not really wearing much other than clothes so you just kind of shake it off and uh what would you like to do now i'd like to pick my weapons back up and then go to the room with the pegasus statue okay so you bend down you pick up you scoop the weapons back up strap them back onto your back and you head back the way that you came into the room with the pedestals and you are now standing in front of these three pedestals. All right. So one looks like it says no guard. I'm like, that's that's probably just a scramble dragon. I've done word puzzles before. So I'm going to put the dragon statue on the, is that the northern pedestal? Yep. So as, as you start to place the, uh, the black dragon statue onto the pedestal, um, it seems to just like be magnetically drawn and as soon as it hits the pressure pad it seems to become heavy to the point that you can't lift it anymore and the black seems to turn into a platinum silver color and it just seems to sink down and right as that happens the nameplate scrambles around and becomes the word dragon Cool. Word puzzle is right. Uh, the other one was no curve, right? Yep. That's, that's probably the griffin. So as you place the griffin onto the, the silver pe pedestal, it does the exact same thing. It snaps in place, sinks down, the color changes to a bright silver. And right as it goes down and the word changes to the word griffin, you hear a click and a grinding so sound from the northwest. But it okay. seems to be very distant. I mean, like, this is this is promising. Uh, let's go back to that door that I was too weak to push open again. In the return. Okay. Um, I'm so, going to take the rest of the toys with me, though. Sorry. I did forget to mention there is a door to the south in this room. I, sorry. In this room. Okay. Sorry. I, I wasn't flipping it's back fine. at the map enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too excited about hearing noises, so I'm going to go back to the original room anyway. Okay, so as you go back to the original room, um, give me your strength check to try to open that door. Uh, 17. 17? Give me a perception check before you push it open. Oh, no. Uh, 19. Okay, so as you're coming up to the door, you hear... Um, a whole bunch of chittering. Um, you can't understand the language. Um, coming from the other side of this room, it seems to be um, very guttural and you can't really understand any of the words, but there seems to be a fair number of creatures on the other side of this door. Do you continue to push the door open, being a curious 12-year-old mind? Probably, but I'll take a weapon out first. I really do like the uh, ogre hook, though, so it's probably going to die. Okay, so you draw the ogre hook and you push open the door, and it does slide open a lot easier this time. And uh, standing in front of you are seven kobolds. What are kobolds again? So they are little dragons. Um, they're humanoid creatures. They stand about three and a half feet tall. They're covered in scales, and they have a very, like, dragon-esque snout. I think they are just adorable, and I immediately take off my backpack to offer them the toys that I found on the island. <laughs> okay, um, so as you walk in, they hadn't noticed you yet, and you take off the backpack, and with all this noise, all seven of these heads snap towards you. Um, and they see these toys, and they kind of uh, are a little confused about what you're doing. Um, however, as you're taking off your backpack, they all draw spears from their backs. 
and uh, roll for initiative. Did there was seven? Seven? Is that, no, sorry, I rolled a ten. Did you say there are seven of them? There are seven, yes. Okay. You rolled a seven? Sorry, what? I rolled a ten. A ten, okay. Uh, sorry, just let me get all of these together. Solving a ten. Sorry, I only have six dice here. Okay, so as you walk into the room pulling out this ogre hook, um, five of the kobolds are going to advance on you and all start trying to stab at you with their spears. I'm going to do all of these at once to make it quicker. Um, and we are, what are we at? That's one. We got one. You're at 17 AC? Okay, so they, they all stab at you, and it just seems to like hit you and not really do any damage to you. You kind of shrug off all of these things, um, and now you get to act. So I've got my bag in my hands. Have they seen the toys? They, they seem to be kind of aggressive. Um, um, they, they, they saw that you, that you took out the toys, but they're like, eh, these seems to be adults, not children. And they just uh, av advanced on you and just like intruder. That's what they're thinking. Huh. Got a gift and everything. This is so rude. Okay. Uh, I still think they're really cute, so I'm not going to attack them. I'm just going to put the toys down and kind of like back away, try and make it clear that I I don't really want to fight you. Like, I'll, I'll defend myself, but I don't want to Do you move fight. yourself more than five feet away from them, or do you stay within five feet? Uh, like, are you backing away a lot, or just... I try and get back to, like, the doorway. Okay, so you you stay within the five feet. So you do you back off a bit to show a little bit of a defensive posture. Um, and as you do this, the other two... Are you doing anything else? I'm uh, just kind of, like, bringing the weapon up so I can try and block, but I... Okay, so you're readying like yourself to attack in case something comes at you. Okay, so mm -hmm. as, as you do this and you're ready yourself, the two that are further back pull out slings and throw rocks at you, and the one does connect. Okay. And that one, as the rock pelts you, it does one point of damage. So it pings you right in the center of the forehead, and there's just a little tiny trickle of blood falling down. Um, it doesn't really seem to hurt much, but, it, you know, it tries. feelings... Um, but they're too far away to react. However, the other five, um, seeing that, um, are going to attack you with their spears as well. Um, one of which does connect. Um, are you going to react as uh, the five come at you with their spears? I'm going to try and like use the back of my weapon to knock the spears out of the way, but I'm not trying to hurt them. Okay, so give me your two uh, attacks to see if you can get two of them out of the way. Uh, the first is a 12, so plus 12. Is it still plus 12 if I'm using the back of the weapon? Yeah, it's still an attack. Okay, so... When you're using the back of the weapon, it just won't... It'll be uh, non-lethal if you connect with the creature. Because it's not okay, pointy. Okay, so... First one is 24... Uh, do I roll for damage, or I, I'm trying just to knock the spear uh, out of the way? No, so what what happens is two of the ones that were coming in at you... Um, sorry, what was your second one? Uh, so you've knocked, second one... successfully knocked one of the creatures uh, out of his hand, and the spear goes flying across the room, and he kind of op looks at you with stunned eyes. Like... The second one is a 16. A 16? Um, that does knock another one out of its hands as well, and it's just kind of glaring like, what the heck just happened here? However, 
there were three others coming at you and one of them did connect um, and it uh, gave <laughs> one point of damage. <laughs> so it kind of just pricks you in the shoulder and you got a little tiny bit of blood dripping down. Um, but it is now your turn to act again. Oh, that's awfully convenient. I'm going to go for two more spears with the back of the weapon again, I guess. Uh, so the first is 11 plus 12, so 23. Yeah, that one successfully gets knocked out as well. And the second is 7 plus 7, so 14. 14. Uh, unfortunately, the second one that you tried to knock out, he did. Uh, she did seem to grasp it enough that it just kind of jerked a bit, but did not knock out of her hands. Um, so there are two with spears still. There's three that are empty-handed and two with the stuff in the back. Are you doing any bonus actions, quaffing potions, or anything like that? I think I'm still in the 80s for hit points, so I'll leave it for now. Okay. Um, so the two in the back, pull the, just uh, load another bullet into their slings. And uh, one of them does connect with the 17, meets it, beats it. Um, and does... Oh, I'm getting really bad rolls. One point of damage. Um, so another rock just kind of pings you in a little spot different. You get a little bit of blood running down the side of your face. Um, doesn't really sting. Just, you know, a little bit of a welt. But I did draw blood. Um, now, the three that have lost their spears are going to come at you and try to bite you now with their teeth. Um, and That's mean. Two, two of them... Um, miss. Um, the one actually falls flat on its face, tripping on its own, own tail um, as it comes in with a nat one. Um, <laughs> but the other one does connect with a bite, and uh, it has taken a three points of uh, hit points off of you, taking a little chunk off of one of your arms. Um, the two with spears come at you again, uh, both missing, because uh, those were very bad rolls. <laughs> and we're back to you. I just wanted some friends. Nope. Uh-oh. Come back. Welcome oh, back. Did I you hit the... Just... That was weird. Oh, Discord does this to me sometimes when I'm on longer calls. Yeah. Disc Discord can do that. Um, whenever you can get the camera back, no rush. That's okay. Um, so what? I didn't hear what you did. Uh, I was still deciding. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was kind of commenting on the fact that I was just trying to make some friends. This is actually kind of hurting my 12-year-old feelings, but uh, I really don't want to hurt these guys. But I guess if I use the back of the weapon... It won't be the worst, so I'm going to use my back of my weapon and just go for the head. Let's knock some people out. Okay, give me your uh, your two swings. I'm going to put that 20 on the first. Okay, so, so even with the back of it, you clearly blow this kobold's head off, and it just kind of explodes. <laughs> You just you put way too much strength into this because even with a with a nat, with a nat twenty, um, these this would not have had enough hit points to be able to withstand even just your plus. <laughs> but, Trust me. But if it's nat twenty and I'm trying not to hurt it, doesn't that mean I'm really good at not hurting? No, <laughs> it means you just you overdid it. It's a crit, so um, it it would have been your damage time like max damage plus your damage roll. <laughs> So just the max damage on your D8 would have exploded the cobalt's head. Um, so you bring the back of the weapon, and it kind of just pops its head, and it ro falls into a clump. And on your second one, um, what do you do? Seeing this uh, poor cobalt's head explode. I am <laughs> genuinely upset, so I'm just going to start, like, screaming and flailing around kind of like y'all get away from me let's stop okay so stop. you enter into a rage um seeing this happen um and you just start 
like seething and you start losing control. So give me your second swing at one of the the guys. Uh, 10 plus 7, 17. 17 does hit, so give me your damage on the second swing. Uh, 7 plus 9, so 16. Okay, so as you just go into this rage, you swing your second one across, and again, you split this cobalt in half. Um, you are much stronger than you think, and you, you have two of the cobalts that you knock the spears out of are just in pieces on the ground now, um, with five more. Um, the two in the back, um, it's their turn to act, and they notice this, and they start fleeing out the door um, that it's on the east side of this, sorry, the west side of this room. Um, they just take off. They're like, nope, I'm out of here. Um, however, through that door, you do hear another creature, and it starts walking through. And as these cobalts go scurrying out, a Formir warrior, all twisted and demented, standing about eight feet tall, with huge sharp claws on its hands, comes ambling in to the room and looks directly at you. And it comes running at you and swings its two claws. For a 16 which misses and a 25 which connects, correct? Yes. Okay, so it as as its first one, it just kind of ricochets off and just pulls cloth. The second one just reefs into you, causing six points of damage. But as it comes across you, it grabs onto you, and I need you to give me a uh, a reflex save, please. Fourteen. Fourteen. So it does, as it rakes across you, it grabs you and slaps you to the ground, pinning you into a grappled position. So you are now grappled. Spring. Then the other three kobolds seeing this aren't scared anymore of their friends who popped. Um, and two try to bite you and the one tries to stick you with the spear but they all do miss um, doing nothing and now it is your turn to act okay so i'm i'm grappled does that mean like i'm on my back can't really move or... yeah yeah you'll you'll have to do a strength check to get out of it which takes up your move action and then you can do your attack if you do successfully get out otherwise um, you do your attack at disadvantage. Okay. Um, but you do have an you do have an inspiration from Dello who did the uh, hundred bits at the beginning, so you can cancel out one of the disadvantages. The uh, one of the disadvantages if you don't get out. Okay. Sure. I'll try and get myself free then. So that's just a typical strength check. P straight strength. Yep. Not one. Not one, so you struggle and you don't do anything. All this swimming must have tired you out. Sorry. Oh, uh, I guess so. My windows are... Okay, there we go. Now I'm not so shiny. <laughs> uh, I had my windows open right here, so it was kind of uh, just glaring in. It's kind of bright out. It's nice. Um, so it does keep you pinned. Um, so you can swing at disadvantage if you want. Um, you can use your inspiration to cancel one of them and just swing one of them normally, but you can only hit the four mirror that is holding you down. You cannot hit any of the cobalts. Oh, that, that's fair. I, I've got beef with this one anyways. <laughs> sure, yeah, I think I'll use inspiration on the first one then since it's got the... Hmm... No, it might be better to use it on the second one, since the first one's got the plus 12. What's the disadvantage do? Disadvantage is you roll twice and take the lower. Okay. And then, cancelling that out, you just roll the one. 
inspiration, you roll twice and take the higher. Okay. So I'll do disadvantage on the first uh, see how that goes, and then decide whether or not to use inspiration on the second. Sounds good. Uh, a 15 and a 13, so I'll take the 13 plus 12. It's a 25. 25. 25 does hit the uh, Formian warrior. So Four. that is the 1d10 plus 9. Uh, 7 plus 9, so 16. 16. So you do the 16 points of damage to this, and it seems to just shake it off. It doesn't seem to really care about this damage that you've done to it. Uh, what are you going to do with your second roll? Is there anything else I could use the inspiration point on, like next turn trying to get out of this grapple? Yeah, you can use it on... Uh, yeah, you technically could have used it on trying to get out of the grapple last time. I can let you try that again with your inspiration to try to oh, struggle no, out. Um, but you can use it on any role that you're doing at all to give yourself okay. advantage if you don't have it. So I'll hold on to it for now. I'll do the two rolls for the second swing. Uh, that's a three and a 14. So I will be taking the three plus seven for 10. And the 10. I don't know so how I'm missing if it's right there. You, but. Your first one you hit. Um, and then as you're coming back, you kind of, you got yourself twisted in a weird way in the way he's holding you. Um, you kind of just come back and you can't quite get the second swing in place. Um, and you don't connect on the second one. Um, now the other two cobalts, you do hear scurrying further away. You just hear them running. They're done. They're like, I'm out of here. Um, and it is now the, the large creature that is pinning you. And he is going to... From the back of him, produce a large tail, which will sting and impale you for a 24, which I believe hits. Yes. And he does a three points of damage, plus he has poisoned you, causing two points of strength damage. So you are now negative two strength from what you were before. Okay, so now that my strength is 16, my modifier on that is Your damage plus... modifier goes down by plus 1. Um, so your okay. 16 would be a plus 3 instead of a plus 4, which you're currently at. Okay. Okay. So is Trent's done then? Uh, yep, now the other three kobolds still seeing that you're pinned, they're coming at you. Um, and actually because you're pinned, they get to attack you with advantage. Um, oh, okay. So, luckily for the advantage on the first one, but it still misses. So it was a nat 1 and a 10. <laughs> uh, the second one, however, as it bites you, does connect and does 3 points of damage. And the second one brings its spear to bear, getting a nat 20. And as the spear plunges into you, it does six points of damage. Okay. Ah, uh, it is time for me to try and get out of this grapple again. So, do I take the inspiration before I do either roll? Yes, you have to call it okay. before. I'm going to take inspiration to try and get out of this grapple. Okay. A 19 and a 16, so I'll be taking the... The, the 19 plus 19. your strength, which is plus 3, is a 24. That 22. 22, that does successfully um, knock this uh, Formirian warrior off of you. He is no longer grappling you, and you are free to do your full attacks with no disadvantage. Okay, am I still in a rage? Yep. The rage lasts for one minute, which is uh, ten rounds. Oh, or, that's a lot. Or until you cancel it. Willingly. No, I, I think I'm pretty angry. Um, what exactly does that do for me, in terms of me trying to beat the crap out of this warrior dude? Yeah, so when you have your rage, you can use your rage abilities. Um, sorry, I'm trying to... Come on. There we go. Um, your rage abilities are power attack, 
Um, you can choose a negative one penalty on all your melee attack rolls um, and gain a plus two to damage. Um, you okay. can also use Vital Strike, um, which when you're using an attack action, you can make one of the attacks at the highest base attack bonus um, that deals additional damage. Um, so what that means is you get to roll your damage twice. It's like a crit. When you're awesome. using Vital Strike, um, you also, where is it? Um, yeah, that's all you have. Those two are your um, rage feats. Uh, vital Strike seems pretty good. Uh, can I use that only on the first swing or on both? Uh, you can use it on either. Okay, so I'll do it on the first swing since that one's more likely to hit, but I will be directing both swings to the warrior unless by some miracle it dies. Uh, so the first roll is 18 plus 12. Or that 30. does connect and it is a vital hit so as you swing you do you target its vital organs and you get to do two um two damage die instead of one and then okay. pl then your single plus okay so it's 2d10 i believe so, it is uh two and then zero is that 10 on a zero is 10 yes okay so that's 12 and then plus nine for Oh, that's uh, a good hit. He had 21 hit points left. <laughs> so explain what happens to this uh, former Irian warrior that uh, pinned you down, poisoned you. Um, what what uh, what do you do? Uh, I go slashing from the bottom up his left thigh across his chest all the way up and out through his right shoulder there and i'm just giving this everything i've got i am so angry i was trying to give these kobolds some toys they've been beating me up and throwing stones at me and this guy poisoned me i'm just so mad at me now i'm not even thinking of the fact that i am taking a life i'm just beating the crap out of me so as as, as you bring this up from um, the right right to left, um, as you come up out the other side, you do have the liver of this warrior sticking on the end of your hook, um, pulling out its vital organs um, with this vital strike. You knew exactly where to put this, um, and you just clearly cleave him in half, and he just slumps into the ground, um, and these other uh, kobolds sort of look a little scared now. Um, they're they're worried that uh, you might be more than they can handle, um, but you How still. How far away are they? Um, they're within five feet. Um, they were standing just behind the Formirian warrior, um, taking shelter. So you still have your other swing. Are there just three of them? There are three. Yes, one has a spear and two do not. All right, I'm aiming for the one with the spear. Okay. I've rolled a four plus seven, so I don't think that hits. It's an eleven. Eleven? No. Eleven misses. So as you come back down, um, the liver just kind of flies off, and it kind of dis puts you in a little bit of a disarray, and you can't hit um, successfully. Um, however, all three of these cobalts are going to flee and draw attack of opportunity, so you can take swings at two of them as they try to run away. Yeah, I'm angry. I'm gonna do it. Uh, not one. And a three plus seven, so I miss both of them. Okay, so I'm they, just kind of like blindly yeah. slashing, and they're your your rage yeah. is turning turning you just uh, just full red. Um, and these kobolds do get out the door, and they are just running as fast as they can, um, and getting away from you. Uh, what are you going to do? Are you going to take notice of the room you are in now, or are you going to just blindly chase? I think uh, they're out of my sight now, so this gives me an opportunity to just kind of end the rage. Okay. Calm down, grab another one of those potions, and knock it back like an apple juice. Okay, so you uh, think thinking, oh, that last one tasted real good, made me feel awesome, roll your uh, threes. 
It's a D8, right? 3D8, yep. Seven, seven, eight. Okay, so you, uh, 22, is that what it is? Yeah, 22 hit points uh, have been restored. Um, you seem to be uh, feeling a lot better. You've calmed yourself down. You, um, you, you know, uh, in, in your past life, you must have done yoga or uh, you had a, a mother who made you do meditation. Um, so you do know how to calm your rage at a pretty quick notice. Um, and you successfully calm yourself down, chug back this potion, bring back 22 hit points of damage. Um, how, how are you looking right now with that 22 restored? Are you back to full health or are you just doing really well? Uh, no, I think full health was 115 and I'm 80. Okay, so you, you're, you're feeling good. Um, so you give me a, as you start taking a look around this room, um, you do notice it is a giant octagon. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the right door. Uh, what room is that? That is B. Um, so the room is, um, it seems to be made out of pure granite. Um, there are huge pillars. There are eight of them around the center um, in line with each of the corners um, that are going up to the ceiling, which stands about 30 feet tall. Um, each of the... However, from like that's right in the center, and where the pillars meet, it seems to slope down at a sharp angle um, to meet the walls um, in each corner as well. So it looks like it's a 3D shape. Um, to the east and the west, there are a door. Each one are very ornately um, designed oak doors. Um, the cobalt says they flee did slam shut the one in the west um, okay. but the one in the east you notice as well so there's nothing to the north uh just a wall to the north yes I wonder what I should do now. I feel like going after them again maybe isn't the best thing right now. I probably still need a moment to calm down. I'm gonna like search the bodies, I guess, if there's anything worth searching. Okay, so as you're uh, searching through the uh, the corpses, you do notice that the uh, kobolds each had about uh, three or four silver upon each of them. There's two dead or three, three dead. Um, so a total of six silver uh, between the three of them. No, okay. sorry, seven silver between the three of them. And the Formerian warrior has um, three gold pieces and a strange-looking amulet. I'm slipping all this into my backpack and picking my toys back up because these kobolds were ungrateful. I'm going to give these toys the love they deserve. Right, that so being you... said, it's a little sad the most interesting ones had to go on the post. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you scoop these uh, statues back up, shove them into the backpack, take the gold and the silver, put the money into your money pouch, um, and drop this amulet also into your backpack. What are you going to do now? So there is I the think... door to the south that you just came out of and got attacked by these kobolds through, and then there's the east and the west. The west is where they fled. Okay, so there's a total of three doors I haven't investigated so far that I'm aware of. There's yep. the one in the room with the pedestals, and then there's the two in this room? Uh, yes. Okay, I'll go to the one... They went to the west, right? So I'll go to the east. Okay, so you go into the east door, and it does open easily. Um, and there's a long hallway in front of you, and as you head down, you come into a, uh, a square room. Um, to the north, you hear some running water, but it looks like a solid wall. To the south, there is a small door. Um, can you give me a perception check, please? Oh, right, cast. Uh, five plus five, so ten. Ten, so um, the, 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 the sound of running water to the north seems strange to you, but you don't notice anything up there, so really all that you can see is the south has that uh, door that you can go through. There are no traps in this room. Okay. Well, the 
water seems strange, but I'm probably still not in the right headspace to think to investigate it, so I'll go down to the south. Okay, so um, as, as you walk down the southern passageway, it kind of twists and turns and curves all over the place, and at the end, it comes to a room um, that has no door. Um, and as you enter into the room, there are candles placed in a big circle around this large circular room, and in the center there is a pentagram inlaid in the stone under your feet, and floating in the middle of this pentagram is a cloud of some sort that keeps shifting shapes. And as you enter, in your head comes a voice like nails on a chalkboard. Why, hello there, mortal. I am Gulgad. I have been trapped here by some whelp of a necromancer. Will you free me? If you do, I will grant you a boon to help you on your adventure. What is my adventure? Life is an adventure. You sound like those door-to-door -door salesmen. What is a door-to-door -door salesman? <laughs> This is in your head. Remember, this is in your head. You, you're not really talking to them. Or it's not really talking to you. Um, oh, nice loophole, ghoul dad. Hmm. Ghoul gad, not ghoul dad. I know. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> I need to see if it can handle being called the wrong thing. This will tell me a lot about its character. <laughs> it seems to shift as you call it Ghoul Dad, um, as if it seemed a little happy. It seems a little... Um, it, it seems happy that you're calling it by the wrong name. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to take the green statue out of my bag. Uh, you said it was a trend? Yep, like a tree end. Ah, a tree man. okay. Cool. And I kind of place it, like, I don't go into the pentagram, but I kind of place it nearby. I sit down on the floor, and I'm like... Okay, you be the tree ant, and I'll be the cockatrice. <laughs> Let's play tea party. As you say this, the, uh, the, the cloud shifts a little bit, and in your head you hear, What are you, a child? You don't look like one dwarf. I'm not a dwarf, I'm a human girl. <laughs> Human girl. Also, I have no idea what it looks like. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Why don't you look down at your hands there, child? Do those look like the hands of a human girl? Yeah, I feel like I could eat a lot of cookies with hands like these. And I mean, that seems like a good thing. I'm telling you now, you are a dwarf. You are not a human. Why do you claim to be one? Because I am one? I think. I mean... Give me a persuasion check to see if you can convince this demon that you are in fact a human. I... Uh... What would I be adding to that? Uh, persuasion? If you do not have any points in it. Um, oh, yeah. That, oh, I was just looking under... That would be diplomacy, key. sorry. That would be your oh, straight okay. charisma, plus two. Okay, so 14. 14. Um, you, you don't seem to convince this, uh, this cloud of smoke 
um, that you are in fact a human. Um, he kind of you kind of hear a sneering, you feel a sneering glare in your head, um, as if he's disapproving of your lies. Well, that's not very nice, Gulad. Why don't you tell me about yourself then? If you release me from this summoning circle, I will gladly. Well, how am I supposed to know I can trust you if you won't even tell me about yourself without strings attached? You can trust me. I have candy. Okay, so uh, my intelligence and wisdom <laughs> are eight and nine, respectively. I, I know. feel like I would fall for the candy. <laughs> I, I feel like I would fall for the candy. Give me a will. I mean, like, give me a will save that's countered by the diplomacy I just rolled. And I'm okay, gonna so... at disadvantage though because of your low intelligence and wisdom. Uh, my total will is plus one. What do I do to the disadvantage? Do I have to roll twice? Yes, it's two rolls and take okay. the lower. You're kidding me. <laughs> so the first one is a four. Yep. And the second one is a two. <laughs> so two plus one is three. Okay. So um, he seems to convince you with a six. <laughs> 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 I did a really bad roll. Um... <laughs> Uh, I, I rolled a two as well. <laughs> I'm going to logic my way in. Mom said don't trust men in vans who offer me candy. And there is no type of vehicle anywhere near here. So this is very clearly a different situation. Also, it's Starburst, and that's my favorite. <laughs> uh, word of warning. Do not get into strangers' vans or... <laughs> Otherwise, of people, do not accept candy from strangers, people. Um, that, that's just a uh, public service announcement. Um, okay, anyways, this uh, dwarf that has very low intelligence and very low wisdom, um, as, as you um, do this, you step into the circle, and as you do, you break the line and the summoning um, breaks, and you hear a very loud cackling. <laughs> And the smoke dissipates. And as the smoke dissipates, you feel a power surge through your body as you now have a resistance to energy damage. So any energy okay. damage that comes in will be reduced by five points, period. Where are the starbursts? There is no candy. <laughs> he lied. I'm on the verge of tears. <laughs> I pick up the the cockatrice and the tree. And I'm like, the smoke's gone, kind of questioning the empty room. So no tea party or candy? There's no response? There is no response. The presence that was once in this room seems to have vanished. I'll pack up my bags, and um, there's no other doors in this room, and it started to give me heebie-jeebies, so I'm going to go back. Uh, I'm going to go back all the way to the Pegasus room. I want to look at the other toys again, and maybe like examine that door. Okay, sorry, which door? Sorry, I was answering someone in chat. What what door are you going oh, back to? Fine. Uh, I'm going all the way back to the pedestal room and taking the south door that I neglected the first time. Okay, the door seems to be locked. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to take a running start and body slam it then. Okay. Um, so as you uh, run and take a body check into this, um, please roll for initiative as the door seems to come to life. That is enough to act first with my uh, total of six. <laughs> okay. 
So this door seems to grow tentacles and just turn into this weird creature as two eyes open up in the middle, looking straight at you with these tentacles coming out the side as you slam into it. Um, I'm actually going to give that a pre-damage, so give me your roll for damage. Which roll for damage? It would be an unarmed attack, so it would be plus your uh, CMB. Which would be, sorry, plus 8 on your uh, d20. So roll your d20 to see if you do damage this creature with your body check. Uh, I rolled a 19. Plus 8, so that's a 27, so that does. So uh, give me an unarmed uh, d 1d6. 5. 5. So you body slam into this, and it seems to cringe a bit. But then you can start your uh, action, and you notice as it comes out, it, it's already taken the five points of damage, but it seems to be a little pissed off now. Um, so how are you going to react to this? Well, it's a door, so I feel like the Great Axe might be a better choice than the Overhook. Okay. Also... I guess I'm 12, I'm getting bored of the overhook, so I whip out the great axe, and I'm like, knock, knock, and I try and do a double swing now. Yep, so do your two swings, plus 12, plus 7, same as your ogre hook. Uh, 13 plus 12, so 25. That is a hit. Uh, so that is, ooh, that's a 1d12 plus... Okay. So the first one was 11 damage plus 9. So. 20? Okay. And the second roll on the Great Axe was a 13 plus 7, so dirty 20. Dirty 20 does hit. Give me yeah. your damage again. Four plus nine, so thirteen. Thirteen. So you have inflicted a total of thirty-eight points of damage to this uh, door. Um, it does not seem to be shaken whatsoever. And as you do this, um, it is going to take its tentacles and just slam into you. Okay. With a twenty-five. Which I think hits. <laughs> yeah. Causing eight points of damage. And as it's raked across you with its tentacle, a whole bunch of goo pours all over you and it kind of sticks to you. And you are now grappled through adhesive. Again? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so... And now it is your turn again. Huh. I mean, I guess the first thing would just be to try and break out of this grapple. Okay. So let's do that. I have rolled... Oh, sorry, is my strength back to the way it was, or no? Nope, you're still poisoned. Ah, okay. So you're still at the plus so, three instead of the plus uh, four. Plus three is 15. I don't know if that breaks. 15, so you try to break out, but this adhesive seems to be sticking to you. Um, you can still swing your weapon. You'll be at disadvantage, but uh, you, you can still attempt it. Hmm... I've got to be engaged in battle with a door. <laughs> and we're losing. Well, I guess there's nothing else for it. Let's do our double swing again. Or I guess it's going to be four rolls this time. Eleven and five. So five plus twelve. Seventeen. A seventeen does hit. However, I need you to give me a reflex save, please. Uh, 
19 plus 5, 24. Okay, so you do hit it and do not get the weapon stuck to this door that just seems to be oozing goo down it. Um, so give me your damage. Okay. One plus nine, so ten. So ten, so that's now 48 points of damage. Um, and give me your second swing. Am I aware that this is kind of like a bad idea? Uh, for possibly using a weapon or no? I, I, th I think with your intelligence and wisdom, you wouldn't. You'd just kind of just like hitting. <laughs> Fair. This thing is spewed all over you and now you're just like get lost okay so those two were an 11 and a 17 so it's 11 plus 7 for 18 18 will hit so i will need another reflex save please is this also a disadvantage actually i didn't realize. No, the reflex is not on disadvantage it's a straight reflex nat 20 nat 20 so again give me your damage <laughs> Uh, You're using... 9 plus 9. I'm using the Great Axe. Yeah, so system. that's 18. Mm -hmm. So that would be now 66 points of damage you've done. Um, it is looking um, warm. It does look like it's starting to fall apart. Its tentacles are getting a little limp. And luckily you do not... Um, your axe did not stick again. It kind of hit and like... <laughs> as you pulled it off. Um, I don't know if you would put two and two together. Um but it is going to come in and try to hit you again. Um, and that is a t dirty 20. Yep, okay. Okay, and that is a nine points of damage, and it has once again grappled you, or still grappled you, which has now put you into a pinned status. Now, to get out of a pinned status, you cannot swing now. Um, you have to get out of pinned into grappled to be able to swing again. Um, so you need to do okay. your, your strength check to see if you can get out. Um, but that is the end of the uh, Mimic's turn. Okay, and I guess I don't really have any choice. Like, I can't do anything until I can move. Yeah, you're out, just, right? you're, the, it seems to have just hit you and slammed you to the ground and poured more of this goo on, and you kind of be just stuck to the ground now. Um, with this weird tentacle on you. This is so mean. <laughs> I rolled a three. Uh, plus three is six. So, so you I'm... struggle and you can't get out. So you are stuck fast. And it is going to come at you again. With a 29 to hit. Doing... 13 points of damage with another slap across the face as you're down on the ground. Oh, and Beaver, do the you want... Underscore Beaver damn <laughs> X100. Hey, Beaver, do you want to give uh, Tella a little bit of advantage here with that 100 bits? To see if she can, uh, you know, try to get out of this uh, gooey mess that she's in? I think she's saying, please say yes. <laughs> okay, perfect. So you can do your uh, strength check at advantage if you want. It seems like a good idea at this point. <laughs> <laughs> With yourself pinned. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've been beat up by doors in real life. But somehow <laughs> it's worse when it just keeps going. The worst ones are stairs. <laughs> oh, stairs are pretty bad. Okay, so that's two rolls to try and get out? Yeah, and you take the higher. Well, the first was two, and the second was 19. So I'm going to go with the 19 plus three. So you successfully struggle yourself out of this goo that's holding you down, and you're back up into a uh, grappled prone position, and you can swing your weapons again. Okay. Uh... Would I still get a bonus action if I swing, or no? Uh, yeah, bonus action is a bonus action. You can still chug a potion if you need to. I mean, I'm under half. I, I don't know. If I get pinned again, I might not be able to drink a potion, right? 
pinned, you can't. No. You're fully okay, restrained so I'll, in that case. I'll do the two swings with the great axe plus two at disadvantage and then circle potion. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, a nine and a nine. So nine okay. plus twelve is. 21 hits. 21. And this is 1 to 12 plus 9, which is 2 plus 9 for 11. And I need to do a reflex save? Yep, do your reflex save. Uh, 7. S plus 5? Yeah. Yes. It's... So, as you swing in, you do do 11 points of damage, but your axe sticks. And you cannot get it out. So now I need... A strength check, which will take up your other um, attack to try to pull it free. Okay. Uh, that, that's a two. Okay. okay, so at, you try to pull it out, but you can't, and it's stuck fast. Um, and it is now going to um, come at you again. Do I get uh, to drink the potion first or no? Yep, yeah, drink your potion. Okay, so that's 3d8, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, six, eight, eight. So you get a good amount of health back, and as you uh, chug the potion, um, it comes swinging at you, but this axe stuck to it seems to throw its equilibrium off a bit, and it misses you. Um, and you are still just uh, grappled, knocked prone, but your weapon is still stuck fast on the door. Um, what are you going to do? Would it cost me anything in terms of action to just let go of this and grab a different weapon? Um, that would be movement, so you're not really moving anywhere. So yes, you can draw your weapon, um, another weapon to attack with if you need to. Instead of trying to pull this weapon out or get a grapple? Yes. Okay. Uh, I think I will... Let the Great Axe go and pull out the Earthbreaker, um, which does a plus 15 on the first, a plus 10 on the second, and is 2d6 plus 9 instead of 1d12 plus 9. Yep. Uh, so I'll do that, yeah. Um, swing one, still with disadvantage, right? Yep, because you are grappled. 13 and 15, so 13 plus the 15. That is a hit, um, but you will need to do a reflex to see if it sticks after you do your damage. Okay. Possibly. So 2d6 plus 9. That was a 6 and a 4, so 19. 19. Um, that brings you to 92? No, 96. 19 damage, right? Yeah, one nine. Okay. Uh, explain what happens as you bring this Earthbreaker down on this uh, door mimic. Uh, I go, like, directly between the eyes. Is it dead? Yeah, that's why you're explaining. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I hit directly between the eyes, and the door kind of just caves in there, and then I split it down the middle, and it's kind of like a weird lime jam mess of splinters and goo caving inwards to where I was originally just trying to awesome. body slam awesome. the door. So you bring this earthbreaker down and it smashes the top of this door and it just crumples back and the ooze just comes pouring out as it splits open um, half falling to the side leaving half of the doorway open and this creature just seems to disintegrate and turn into a goo on the floor. Um, and you have successfully gotten yourself out of this initiative once again. Okay, so with the damage and potion chugging, I am at 77 hit points now. Yep. Uh, which is okay, I guess. 77 out of the original 115. Yep. Not too terrible. And then down, and I... down this hallway where this door was... Um, you do see just more torches um, lining it, and then it seems to dip out to the west. Okay. Do I 
need to like get myself out of this grapple or does the goo kind of fall off it, it's it seems to just melt away after you destroyed this mimic it just kind of just seeps off of you and seeps into the hard dirt floor again um as if you weren't stuck anymore well i'll pick up my axe i like this earthbreaker it's my new weapon of choice like changing things up it's fun uh i'm gonna go down that hallway but i am going to keep an eye out because i keep letting my guard down at <laughs> the moments where i shouldn't be Okay, so um, as you walk down this hallway, you enter into another room. Um, to the north, you do see an intricate door made out of iron. Um, and it has some weird runes in an archaic language that you don't understand written on it. Um, can you give me an arcana check? Knowledge arcana? It's probably not going to hit. Actually, I could almost guarantee it's not going to hit. But um, let's just have some fun with some rolls. Knowledge it doesn't have anything written next to it um so that would be your intelligence bonus <laughs> right but uh Being my innate. unlearned does that just make it impossible uh da, 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 let me just look it's under background traits uh unlearned i think makes yeah that just gives you a negative two on top of that on your one okay. that you don't know. So, so it would be that is... a negative three on whatever you roll. <laughs> I rolled a 16, so that's a 13? A 13. Um, so you cannot make out what these... Uh, th this was a DC 25. You would have had to roll a... <laughs> you, you were, it was impossible. But we have to roll dice. Um, that's all part <laughs> of this. Um, but you cannot make it out. It just seems to be like gibberish and you don't know what's going on and uh, what's going... What, this says but the door is sitting there and it has some weird runes on it and that's the only door the north one nothing else in that room huh yes sorry you asked right as i filled my mouth well i'm gonna kind of like stand near the doorway that i came in through and Pluck a torch off the wall, I guess, and just throw it at this door. Okay, so yeah, the, the iron one. Give me your strength check to see if you can get it across this room. It's about fifteen feet from where you are. Fourteen plus three. So seventeen. 17. Yeah. So you successfully throw the torch. It goes seventeen feet, which hits the fifteen foot away. Um, it just ricochets off the door and falls off. Okay. Yeah, good enough for me. I'm going to go touch the door. Okay, so as you go up to the door, it seems to be locked. There seems to oh. be an intricate lock placed on it. Um, it seems like you might be able to either pick it or break it, though. Well, do I have lock picking? Where would that be? Uh, that would be... Doo -doo -doo. Da, da, da. Slight of that would end up being probably a sleight of hand check, um, which you're unlearned, so you'd be dex minus two, which would be zero. So whatever your straight roll is, but you don't have any tools. Okay. So so can... I'll just take the earthbreaker. Is there a handle on this, or is it just like a... it, what type of block are we looking at? It, it's like a padlock kind of thing with with an iron clasp. And above it is a ring, just like the other doors that you saw with the ring. But this one seems to be padlocked shut. I'm just going to try and, like, bash the padlock off. Okay, give me, give me your attack. Uh, 17 plus 3 for dirty 20. Oh, that that uh, successfully gets it. Now give me your damage. I'm using the... Which so is... That, that's the 2d6, 2D6 plus, nine. plus 9, yep. Five plus three plus nine. So seventeen. So yes. you you hit this lock with your earthbreaker, and it seems to crunch a little bit, but it does not fully give. Um, you seem to have damaged it pretty well, though. All right, I'll just swing again. Okay, give me your swing. Oh crap. 
spell in the draft. I should really look at that. Uh, that is a five plus three, so I guess that uh, overconfident. I missed this one. <laughs> yep, so as you swing, you miss. Um, not doing any damage to it. Um, remember, these are attacks, though. These aren't uh, strength checks. These are straight attacks. Oh, So okay. So that would have been... Oh, plus 10, I guess, if it's the second swing. Yeah, it would be your second swing, so plus 10. Probably still would have missed those early. What was it? A 5? Uh, it was a 5 with the strength bonus, so it was... Okay, so a... it was like a 2? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, on the second swing, you do miss. Um, do you want to wind up for another 2? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh... 8 plus 15. Yeah, roll your damage. So... Uh, you shouldn't have even had to roll the first. It's a 15 DC to to connect. Oh. <laughs> 6 plus 4 plus 9. So 19. 19. So this time you successfully, as you bring the Earthbreaker down, snap the lock off and the, the pad opens and it seems to be unlocked now. Okay. I'm going to just, like, start poking the door with the Earthbreaker. Okay, and as, as you poke at the door, it does seem to swing open. Um, and this opens up into another circular room with a pentagram in the middle. Um, it does look like a summoning circle, and in the middle sits a large cat that is staring directly at you. Oh my god, kitty! It seems to be made of both light and darkness at the same time. What's your name? As you start talking, its ears perk and turn directly towards you. And it says, What brings you to me today? Strangeling, you seem to be like me, both of this world. And not. What do you seek? There's a lot of words. But what is your name? My name is secret to me. I do not give my name freely. Hi, Secret Tommy. My name is not Secret Tommy, young girl dwarf, human thing. Oh, you know I'm a human? Gul'dad didn't believe me. Gul'dad? Did that idiot give you his name? Yeah, and then he offered me candy, but then the candy was gone, and... He was gone, and we didn't have a tea party. And as you say this, the uh, the cat just kind of shakes its head and looks down. Ah, <sighs> cool dad. Always stupid. Hey, it's not nice to swear. <laughs> Quizzically, the this cat creature looks at you and goes... That is not a swear word, young child. However, I will try not to say that word anymore in your presence, if that be your wish. Yes, please. Do you want to have a tea party? I have some toys. No, I would like to go back to my plane of existence. It hurts to be here. Oh, I think I understand how you feel. I miss my friends, too. Do you have any ways to release me? Or do you have any questions for me? Do you know how I can get back home? Yes, I know the way home. However, you will not like it. Oh. Will I not like hearing it or not like doing it? Yes. You seem sneaky. What 
What do you need from me, and what do I need from you? I need you to release me. I do not know what you need of me, child. Hmm. Well, not secret, Tommy. I would like to know the way home, even if I'm not willing to do it right now. To get home, you must get past the cave troll. Well, that doesn't sound too bad. I've already beaten up lots of things, including a door. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, if you let me go, I can help you. Will you help me? Yes. Prove to me that I can trust you, and I'll do what I can do to help. The cave troll that stands at the entrance of this cave protects a boundary between our worlds, between your world and this one. If you can defeat and get past it, you may be able to get back to your original self. But I warn you, child, you may not like what comes of going back to your original self. What's that supposed to mean? I don't know if you're ready to hear this. Are you sure you would like me to tell you? Well, no matter how bad it is, not knowing won't help me, so yes. Okay. But let me sit down first. Okay. <laughs> well, the reason that you are here in this dwarf woman's body is she was killed as were you, and your soul became one with this dwarf. When you chased the ball into the street, you were hit by a truck. If you go back to your world, you will be no more. However, if you choose to stay in this world, you can continue to live. other choices? You could let me eat you. Uh, no thanks. If you let me free, I will help you to make better decisions in the future. I mean, that seems like a good idea to me. <laughs> All you have to do is break the circle, place something across it, be it a foot, a leg, a toy, and I shall grant you a boon and then disappear from this plane back to mine. I put down the red gelatinous cube because it's my least favorite of the three toys. So as you place the gelatinous cube onto this summoning circle, it she seems to shimmer and then vanish. And the, this cat creature gets up and slowly struts over to you and places a paw on your forehead. And as it touches your forehead, you feel a warmth run through your body and your intelligence score has gone up by five permanently. And right after this warm feeling rushes through your body, it vanishes in both a flash of light and darkness at the same time. Pretty cool special effects. Uh, so my intelligence is 13 now, so that's plus one instead of minus. Uh, yep. 11 and 12 is plus one, 13 and 14 is plus two. Plus two. No, 10 and 11. No, it's a plus one. You're right. 13 is plus one. 14 and 15 is plus two. My bad. Um, so yes, you are now 
There doesn't seem to be anything else in this room other than the uh, the circle of candles. Okay, so that means the only door that I'm aware of that I went to is the one the cobalt ran through. And the trickling water, but yes, you did not see that. Well, you yeah. just heard water and you're like, meh. Okay. Well, back to the cobalt cycle then. Okay, so as you head back, you go through all these, you pass the pillars, um, you go through the main room, you enter into this hexagon room, and you head out into the eastern door from this room. And as you hear, you hear a very loud guttural laughing, um, and you see three cobalts come flying out and smashing in the wall right in front of you, dead. And I'm going to need you to roll for initiative. So that's a natural one for me. <laughs> okay. So as you do that, as you come walking in and you see these cobalts come flying against the wall, out of this, um, this giant room, this door that seems to be 10 feet tall and 8 feet wide, um, strolls not a cave troll, but a cave giant. It has a large battle axe in its hands. And seeing you, it comes and attacks, taking two swings. And that is almost unheard of. That was two fours on two different dice. <laughs> giving me a 16 and a 13, which or an 11, which I think both miss. Uh, AC is 17. Yeah, so it swings twice and misses you on both of its attacks. Um, and it is now your turn to react to this uh, giant coming out towards you. Okay. So there's a door behind it. Yep. And there's a door behind it. It's a large it. large entranceway. It doesn't seem to be a door. It just seems to be like a big archway that it walked out of. And it seems to be almost taking up the entire space of this well, 10 foot by 8 foot. This suggested not even fighting this, I say with my newly improved intelligence score. Um... What is the benefit of potentially dying in this fight or winning and then dying immediately? <laughs> so I'm just gonna, gonna like back out of this room, which hopefully has a door that's too small for this giant to follow me. As you and, start uh, as you start backing away, you do draw an attack of opportunity. Okay. Um, and it gets a uh, 30, which I think is a hit. Oh, possibly. <laughs> and that is these two, which gives you 15. So it slashes across you, doing 15 points of damage as you back out of the room. Um, and you are it's still in your initiative right now, but it has sliced you pretty good. Uh, so am I out of the room? Am I yep. like you're out in, of you're range? in the other room? Um, you are out of range. Luckily, um, you have moved five feet out. Um, you are through that other door. You have just made it through. You're probably about ten feet into the uh, octagon room, and that draws all your movement. Am I allowed to just like walk away from this? You can try, but where where would you go? Everything seems I mean, to I'm... have been a dead end, hasn't it? Perhaps I will sit down and meditate in the middle of this room while the giant's just kind of like... No, I should probably get out of this room. I'll go back to the room that I started in. Okay, but... I will attempt to meditate. But you're in initiative, so you can only move to that point and then do something. 
you can ah, ready yourself okay. and you can't keep mm. moving because it would then be the giant's turn. Okay. Uh I will take up a defensive position once again and drain the potion. Okay. So bring your health back, and as you're doing that, um, <laughs> oh, what's the odds of this one? Um, so the giant comes lumbering up, and it can't make it through. However, it rolled a nat 1 and a nat 20. A nat 20 was on its first swing, and a nat 1 was on its second to break this wall between you and it. Um, and so the nat 20 would be automatic 12 plus uh, 15 plus nine is 26. So it does a whole bunch of damage to this wall and it seems to be cracking and crumbling, but it hasn't given way yet. Um, and it's natural one just totally missed <laughs> it seemed to as it hit so hard on the uh, wall the first time it shook and it kind of hurt its hands and missed the second time um, and it is back to your turn to act okay. uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem like there's too many good choices here I healed uh, 20 hit points by the way I got a 7 and 7 and 6 You've been getting good um, good heals on these last two. Three. The last yeah, the three last were three were good. 22, 22, and 20. Uh, so I'm back up to 82 health, which is more than I went into that fight with. <laughs> um, Alright, there's not really anywhere to go. But as I'm standing here panicking, I guess I do remember that the water sound was coming through the door immediately behind me, right? Yeah. So could I get into that room with the movement that uh, I... You can get into on? the hallway. Um, okay. So through a second door, yes. I think I'll do that then. Maybe buy a bit of space between me and this giant. Uh, okay. Not looking to look at that wall falling in. Okay. And as as you make your way into the second door, um, I get a, I got a, a nat twenty again, <laughs> and that oh, wall. Uh, so that will, yeah, the wall crumbles in. You hear a crumbling sound of the wall, and you hear Rah! as it comes lumbering towards, and it starts sniffing around, trying to find out where you went, if you went south or east. Um, and it's trying to figure that out. So while it's trying to figure that out, it's your turn. I'm going to do some rolls in the back while you do your actions. Okay. Um, I'm kind of just thinking to myself, I really wish I'd hired this guy to beat up the door for me because he seems to be having a much easier time of a much more difficult foe. Um, I'm going to try and quietly finish getting through this hallway. Give me your stealth check. Okay, so as you try to sneak, you're like, kunk, 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 kunk. <laughs> uh, you know, not not really uh, very sneaky. Um, you're you're not used to the heavy footfalls yet, so it's like echoing as you're walking, um, and it it seems to uh, you hear a roar from the other room as it notices which way you're coming from. Um, but you do successfully get out of the hallway into that other room um, where the water sound was trickling from. Can you give me a perception check, please? Uh, nat 20. Nat 20. So you do notice on the northern wall, um, there seems to be some sort of etching in the wall that you didn't notice before. Um, Panic does that to someone. <laughs> but as you're doing that... You're hearing crashing from the wall behind you as it gets two successful hits on this wall. 
Neither of them crit, okay. luckily. Um, for a total of 18, 24, 34, 35 damage to the wall. It has not crumbled in, but it has taken a lot of damage. <laughs> so it is raging pretty hard. You do feel a little more comfortable, though, because you do have um, two walls between you and this uh, giant. Um, and it's trying yeah. to get through. So, And you don't hear the crumbling sound of a wall yet. So what would you do now? Uh, am I able to investigate the etching and maybe try and figure out if this is something I can work with? This wall in front yeah. of me with the water so, sounds behind So me? as you run your hands across these etchings on the wall, um, a door seems to appear right in front of you and swing open. And in front of you, you see a large cavern with a dock jutting out into water with some weird bubbles coming up at the end of the dock. Um, it is a little too far away for you to get there, but you can get into that cavern and not to the dock, though, just into the cavern. And you can see that it's it's literally just a little pad of, of dirt with water going off into the darkness, so hundreds and hundreds of feet of water um, and this... Um, dock with the bubbles at the end. Um, yeah, I think I'll go in and get another as wall you, between you. As you do that, you hear the first wall crumble, and another roar from this giant as it's ambling towards you. Um, you do once again have... Um, well, now you have three doors between you and it. Um, but it does seem to know exactly where you are. Um, so it's your turn to move now. Okay, um, I'm gonna go to the end of the dock if I can make it there. Yep, so you get to the end of the dock, and as you uh, approach it, um, a maraid bursts through the surface, and it's looking kind of strange. Um, it has a weird glow about it. Um, they seem to be uh, being forced to live in the shallows. They're used to living in deeper water, um, and having more freedom um, and it looks at you and it doesn't seem to be able to talk hmm. well I think I will try to communicate with them anyway do they seem hostile Nope, they just seem to be uh, looking a little scared and concerned and downtrodden. Hey, I'm currently running for my life. Can you help me? Uh, give me a perception check real quick. Because as you're talking um, to it, it starts flailing its arms about. I just want to see if you notice what it seems to be doing. I don't think so. I rolled a three and my perception is plus five, so that's an eight. Yeah, so it, it's flailing about and seeming to try to communicate with you through weird hand gestures and pointing, and you don't seem to be able to notice. Oh, we lost you again. Um... You don't seem to... You don't seem to notice... Yeah, Discord doesn't like you today, does it? Um... That's okay. Um, so it's gesturing around, but you can't really make out what it's doing. Um, do you want to poke around the room, or what would you like to do now? Uh. Remember, this creature is, like, glowing. It seems to be pulsing a weird glow around it. I guess looking around wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, sure. Do I see anything that might be able to help me either understand this creature or get across this water. Um, yeah, give me another perception real quick as you're gazing around the room. So you start looking around this this okay. room. A what? And that one. <laughs> and uh, you, you, you close your eyes, thinking that that's going to help you. Um, with your newfound intelligence, you're like, maybe I can just sense it. And you close your eyes while you're looking around the room, and you don't really sense anything. Um, however... You do hear the crashing of another wall. 
as it falls. Okay, okay. This creature seems to be getting a little more frantic as it's hearing all of this noise and sees you closing your eyes as you're looking around the room. Um, it seems to be flailing even more. You hear a splashing sound from the water as it's trying to get your attention. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll pay attention then. Okay. Uh... And as it's, it's doing some weird gestures and pointing towards the walls, um, so I'm going to give you a perception check with advantage right now to see if you can make out wh what it's trying to tell you. Okay. <laughs> so that's two rolls take the higher? Yep. So it's a six and an eight, so that is eight plus five for a solid 13. So th these gestures just seem to confuse you more and you seem to look around and you're, you seem to trying to be look looking for like a boat or something. You don't know what the heck this creature is talking about. Um, would you like to do anything else while you're uh, hearing all this crashing from behind you, all this flailing and splashing in front of you and these weird pulses of light from this creature happening? What else might be useful right now? Um... I'm gonna hand it the amulet from my bag. I don't know if that's gonna help, but like, here. Okay, it, it takes the amulet, and as as it takes it into its hand, it kind of looks stern and cross, and throws the amulet against the wall on the east side. Mean, but I look towards the sound. Are you gonna? Do anything over there, or are you just going to look over there? Uh, I guess I'll walk over to maybe pick up the amulet and be looking around like, why here? Like, Okay, so as, as you walk over and you pick up the amulet, you do notice a small um, niche in the wall that seems to be pulsing a strange glow as well. Um, deep within it seems to be set a stone. That is okay. the cause of this pulse. However, like how far? Uh, okay, right. It, well, it's it's almost right at the thing. Um, you do hear another wall crash behind you. So one left. Yes. Okay. Um, it how seems to be you... getting closer. Um, you can hear breathing right outside the door where you walked in. That's slightly uncomfy. Uh, <laughs> how far in is this pulsing rock? Uh, it's pretty close to the surface. You could probably smash it with a hammer if you get a good enough swing. I'm supposed to smash it or touch it, though. I don't know. It's a good question. Do I have time to do both? Uh, you could do single swing and touch, or you could... Well, yeah, touch is more of a movement action, so I could let you touch it if you want um, to see All if right. anything happens. Sure, I'll poke the rock. Okay. Like, uh, Give me a reflex save, please. Oh God, okay. uh, 16 plus 5 21. 21. Um, so you luckily take half of the 8 points of damage, so only 4 points of damage. As you touch it, a searing pain roars through your hand, up your arm, uh, as it seems to be superheated. Ah, okay. Okay. Well, now I'm angry, so I smash it with my hammer. Okay, give me your um, two, give me your attack rolls. Five plus fifteen. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Okay. Uh, Thirty twenty. That will hit. So give me your damage. Two plus one plus nine for twelve. Twelve. Okay. okay. So as you swing your hammer and you smash into it, um, it it doesn't really seem to do any damage to this stone. Are you going to take a second swing? Yeah. Okay. 
19 plus 10 for 29. Yep, so give me your damage. 2 plus 2 plus 9. 13. 13. So as you do your second swing, um, it, it does seem to have a little chip of it fall off, um, but it still does seem to be glowing. And from behind you, you do hear more roaring and more slamming as the door, the wall starts to crumble, but does not quite fall yet um, with one nat one. Um, <laughs> it does not get its double hit in. Um, and I will let you go again with uh, either taking out this rock or trying to do something else. Okay, uh, do I have time to glance back at the, uh, creature friend, smash the rock, and then maybe move if I need to after doing so? Yeah, you can do an action and then a movement, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to glance back, just kind of try and get a feel for, is this what I was supposed to be doing? And or... as, you, as you glance back, it gives you the two thumbs up. <laughs> as it's like <laughs> pulsating it's like it's got a big grin on its face it's like <laughs> it seems like a stress grin but uh yeah let's, let's go for another two swings uh the first one is 18 plus 15 for 25 yep two plus one plus nine for another 12 now give me your second uh, hit. Natural one. Natural one. So your first one does not seem to break through the hardness of this uh, rock. Um, and you do hear more swinging from behind you. And it still doesn't crumble in. It It's almost teetering. Um, but it's not getting its good swings in. Um, but it's pretty close. And you can hear heavy breathing from this giant as it's getting really mad at these walls and just not liking having to bust through everything um, to get at its prey. Um, and it is your turn to act again. Okay, double swing. Uh, 3 plus 15 for 18. That's a hit. 6 plus 1 plus, oh, I don't have to roll that. Plus 9 no, is 6 16. plus 1 plus 9, yeah. Okay, now give me your second swing. Natural 1! So again, you don't seem to break through the hardness of this uh, material. It seems every time you're taking a swing at it, um, it's restoring itself um, a little bit. And then from behind you, you hear two more swings, and the wall does still not collapse. <laughs> Are you sure the wall hasn't collapsed yet? Yeah, I got two nat ones. <laughs> oh, wow, we're really uh, raking those in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, now it's your turn um, to either keep going or stop or go after the giant. You get to pick what you do in here. Oh, God. Okay. Um... You hear a happy splashing, like trying to encourage you on to to get going and break this rock so this creature can start talking again. I am going to double swing at the rock again, and if I do not break it, I will drink a potion as a bonus action. Okay, if you get over 15, you've hit it, and then you just roll your damage, and then I'll add your damage to see if you do end up. First one was 2 plus 15 to hit. Second is 18 plus 10, so both hit this time. Yeah, so give Barely me your... on the first, right? Yeah, one less and it would have been a mess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that is 1 plus 5 plus 9, and 1 plus 3 plus 9. So 15 and 13. Okay, so as you swing both times this time, you seem to hit it, and on the second one, a resounding crack comes from this stone as the glowing stops and it falls apart. The music stopped dead as I was doing that. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and it just... And all of the light seems to fade. And from behind you, it says, Thank you, thank you! Thank you. If you want a prize, come get it before I leave. Uh, sure. Yeah, uh, I'm going back that way. I'm like, 
please get me out of here. So as you start heading towards it, it throws a bag at you and then just takes off and swims away. The bag lands directly at your feet. All right, can I open this bag before uh, Mr. Not-So-Nice Guy comes crashing through behind me? Yep, so you pick up the bag, and it seems to be emitting some strange aura, and as you open it up, the bag seems to be opening into a dimension that you can't tell, and it seems to be a bag of holding. Can I go into the bag of holding? It is too small for you to get into. I'm going to blindly reach into the bag of holding. Roll me a d10. Ten. So you did end up pulling the one thing, so you got the exact roll. Um, so as you reach in, you seem to pull out, and as you're coming, it just seems to keep going, kind of like the Barney bag. <laughs> or oh, Mary yeah. Poppins bag when she's pulling out the lamp. And out comes a canoe. It seems, like a good... it seems to have a large hole in it, though. Slightly less good. Uh, do I have anything that can help me with the hole in the canoe? Um, can I just like put my butt in it and hope for the best? <laughs> as, as you start looking around and trying to find something, the wall does crash down. And the giant stomps in because I got double 19 on that roll. I'm getting really crazy rolls today. Like, double one, double 19. You don't get those. It's one in 400 chance. <laughs> um, and in lumbers this giant, and it starts looking around this room for you. And spots you, and starts moving directly towards you. All right. Uh, I think we're just going to have to go for it. Try and put the canoe in the water, put my butt in the canoe hole. I don't even know if there's a paddle, but if not, I guess I'm using one of my weapons to try and get off this. <laughs> okay, it has not made it to you yet. It's still about 10 feet away, so moving away will not draw any attacks. Um, are you just going to try to just get in? This seems like something a panicking 12-year-old would do. So okay, yes. so you throw it in and you jump in, and water starts pouring into the canoe. Um, are you going to try to do anything before you start paddling as you see water start seeping up into this canoe? From the hole in the bottom or from the sides? From the hole. Am I not sitting in the hole? This is not good enough? <laughs> oh, you're sitting in the hole? Like you're yes. on top of it? It seems to be seeping like it seems to be just seeping through. It doesn't seem like you're making a tight enough seal. Um, okay. It's, it's oh. not pouring in, it's just coming in slightly. Um, so, you know, it's just starting to get wet in there. Okay. Uh, I'm going to leave the bag of holding open on the ground of the canoe, hoping that if the water gets up to that height, it'll just go in the bag of holding. And I'm going to start trying to paddle my way across this water that I don't know where it goes or how far it goes. Okay. Um, so as you start going, you get about 30 feet out and you hear the giant start lumbering in after you. Um, and it does move a bit faster than you. Um, and the water that you're in right now is only about five or six feet deep. And the giant lumbers in and takes two swings at the canoe. Yikes. And double four. <laughs> But the first one does hit. Um, okay. Being a... Doo, 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 where is that one? Being a plus 12, that is a 16. And that's enough to cover the AC and hardness of the thing. So then let's do this. And it does 19 points of damage. And as it brings its axe down, it just splits the front of this canoe, the back of this canoe off. And it just starts sinking like crazy. And you are down in the water now. You're in about six feet of water, so you can't touch. And the bag of holding is just floating on the top near you. 
Um, and its second swing misses, um, not being able to connect with you, being only a 13. I do not know what to do from here. Uh, huh. So in right behind the giant... It seems to be about two feet of water, so it seems to have dropped out pretty quick within about ten feet. So you're you're in front of the giant. If you swing around and keep within five feet, you do not draw an attack of opportunity. So you could try to swing around behind it. Okay, sure. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so give me uh, a swim check because you're kind of not touching. Fifteen. Fifteen? Okay, you, you successfully do uh, swim without issue. Fifteen is meets it, beats it. Oh, wait. Or would it be 14 because my strength's been decreased? It might be 14. Yeah, so you, you get half movement, so you can only move up to 15 feet now um, in your swim. Okay. Um, which I think will still, yeah, that will still move you around because you'll be able to go 5 and 5 and 5 to get around it. Okay. Um, so you've successfully gotten yourself into shallower water. Um, you know, it's still up to your waist because you're only four, four foot and a bit. Um, what will <laughs> you do as you take your position? I don't see any other options. We're, we're going all in. Uh, can I trigger rage again? Yep. Um, I will do so them and am i able to do uh vital strike like every turn or no uh you can you can do a one every t uh i think it's once per rage uh let me double check that uh. It can be used on every turn. So you can use it once on every turn. Okay. We're we're going all in. Uh Vital Strike with Earthbreaker. Your main attack? Yeah, the, the first one. Okay. So that is thirteen plus fifteen. That's a hit. And since it's 2d6 plus 9, am I doing 4d6? 4d6 plus, yeah. Okay. Uh, 2, a 3, a 3, and a 3. So that's 20 points of damage. So as, as you bring your axe down, it roars as you go right across its back left butt cheek. And it seems to um, have a second crack. <laughs> and for your second <laughs> swing natural one so I, I think this opening of the second crack kind of surprised you um, because um, too many butt the, jokes came the butt jokes in come flooding just... into your head and you start chuckling to yourself <laughs> and, and you just forget to swing the second time um, and as you do that the giant whips around with its great axe and with its first swing, gets a 27, which I think is a hit. Yeah. And its yeah. second is a 26, which I think is a hit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that will be 4d6 plus 18. Um, so that will be 28, 33 points of damage. As it's oh, total. As it slams its axe into you twice, knocking you back a bit, you just, like, have been obliterated with all of this damage. You're still... Oh, but you're raging, so you take half of that. So it's actually oh. uh, 16 points of damage. Okay. Yeah, because when you're in a rage, you take less damage. 
So that's, that's, that's quite a big difference. 16 points of damage. And now it's your turn. You're seeming to get even angrier now that you've just been smashed a bunch of times. Uh, yeah, we're doing a uh, vital strike with Earthbreaker again, and I'm going to try and whip out a potion for bonus action after the double hit as well. Yep. How many potions do you have left? I think I've used four. Yep. So four left. Okay. Okay, so that is a six plus 15 for 21. 21, 21 does hit. Okay. So that one is three plus three plus five plus five plus nine. So that's 25. 10. Okay, um, so this giant seems to be um, looking a little damaged. Uh, it's not too, too bad. So this time you slice it across the belly or smash it in the belly because, oh, you're not using something. So you can't slice and give it a crack. Okay, that's it. Oh, well, whatever. I used the corner of the... It's like a square, right? <laughs> Thank you, Ninja Crow. Uh, had you done a few more, it would have been able to give uh, Tella here an advantage. But thank you for the 69 bits. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you get your second attack now. Alright. Uh, 9 plus 10 for 19, does that hit? 19 meets it, beats it. Okay, so yes. So roll your standard damage. Uh, 3 plus 2 plus 9, so 14. 14? So that is now at... Good timing. 69 points of damage! Ninja Crow, you read the mind of this game and the rolls. You are awesome. Um, Sorry, yeah. Am I able to take the potion as bonus as well? Yes, or? that's a bonus action. So okay. do your healing. And as you're doing your healing, it's going to... And swing down on you. And with its first swing, it gets a... Uh, 19. Does that hit? Yes. Okay, and its second swing is a 21, uh, which is also a hit. So I'm going to do the damage for both of those. And then it's going to be halved. So that is 14 plus 18 is 34 halved is 17 damage. How much did you heal? 15. <laughs> 15, so you, you're down by a little bit. You're down two more hit points. Um, but that does end its turn, and it's up to you again. Um, and this is round three of your rage. Okay. Uh, sorry, does the rage count reset, or is it, like, total for the rest of how many turns I get in a rage? It's per rest. and it No, no, like, when you rage, it's a new set of ten. But you okay. can rage three times per long rest, so you've already used two now. Okay. Sorry, I haven't played Barbarian before. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I was trying to throw you into something you're not used to. Melee. <laughs> Literally anything but druid. You're used, uh, <laughs> you're used to spellcaster. Just anything other than druid. <laughs> a little out of my element. Uh, but yeah, I guess we'll... More smashy we'll smashy? Just go with the same thing. It seems to be working, right? Like a yeah. vital with Earthbreaker? Let's, let's go again. Uh, 14 plus 15... That's a hit. So that is 4 plus 2 plus 6 plus 6 plus 9. Yep. So that's... So that's 16, 25, 27. So you literally got the rest of its hit points there, so explain what happens. Oh, that's the <laughs> second time that's... Yeah. Oh, we finished them off just the right amount. Uh, I really wasn't liking the way this man's belly button was looking at me. <laughs> so I just kind of like double-handed went straight for it from like top left. No, I'm going to go like this way. Okay. Cave it in a little bit, I think. Making the belly button 
that much bigger. And uh, I don't know, maybe so some organs pop on the inside. As you swing your earth breaker through, it kind of boops the belly button. And as you just, you had just enough momentum that you just rip his entire stomach open and out pours his intestines and guts and he kind of collapses into a heap right in front of you in the water and blood starts seeping out and the water starts turning red all around you um and in your head you kind of hear the because you're a 12 year old kid you kind of hear that sound in your head um and you remember the words of the uh strange cat demon light dark creature um, telling uh, you secret Tommy secret Tommy as you will call um, her <laughs> um, telling you that the the room that this tr as as it called it troll um, was protecting so it seemed to not be telling the full truth but it will uh, set you free what will you do oh but like secret Tommy totally implied that me being set free meant dying I think I have enough intelligence to realize that fully now, like the gravity of the situation. I'm going to loot the body. Okay. Um, going through the body, you do find that it has about 18 platinum pieces and 182 gold pieces on it. Um, nothing else other than the, the giant battle axe that it had, um, which you could add to your inventory, but yours seems to glow a little more. Eh, I think probably fine. I've got enough heavy things and I'm not hoping to get across this water, not gonna lie. Um, can I retrieve the bag of holding? Yep, you scoop up the bag of holding. Um, it is now part of your inventory as well. I'll go back to the shore, I guess, and just keep looking through this bag, you know? I think I've deserved a few minutes to look at cool magic things. Okay, so as you're uh, searching through this bag of holding, um, there doesn't really seem to be anything else in here. Um, mm. The only... You had to roll a 10 to get the canoe out. And you rolled a 10. Um, it seems to be empty. Um, other than... Well, that's depressing. That lucky canoe that you had. I don't have it anymore, though. It's sunk. That's why I said had. <laughs> uh, this is... Oh. I mean, I could, like, try and tear some doors up to get across. Like... If I'm looking out across this water, I can't see the end of it, can I? No. Then I guess I have no choice but to go back to the room that the giant troll was guarding. Okay, I so you, you head, around won't hurt. head back, um, picking your way through all the rubble that this uh, giant created, crashing open all of these um, doorways, and you come to this uh, room that seems to be about five foot or 10 foot deep and about 20 feet wide, and it doesn't seem to have anything spectacular. Um, however, it does seem to have a little opening that's just big enough for you to crawl through that seems to go into a long pathway um, and a long little, like, tunnel that you can crawl through. This is where the real secret tunnel comes in. <laughs> Secret Tommy said this was a bad idea. Do I think it's a bad idea? It's your choice. It's your character. I mean, there's nowhere else to go. Yep, there isn't. Your hand may be being forced. <laughs> Let's go through the secret tunnel. So as you crawl into the tunnel, you hear a strange pressure and voice come into your head. That says, make a choice. Here or home. Do I recognize the voice? No, it just seems to be coming from nowhere and everywhere at the same time, well in your head. Um, you don't recognize the voice at all. Um, it just seems to be there. It doesn't seem to be scary or happy. It doesn't really have any emotions attached to it. It just is kind of there. Please help me choose. I ask the voice. 
and resounding back in your head is, it is your choice to make, no one else's. What happens if I stay? Silence. You hear nothing after that. Okay, but like if I stay, do I stay in this little catacomb or do I stay like in this world? Still no 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 answers. We're staying. As you say the word stay, you are sucked out through this portal and into an overworld. And in front of you is a vast forest with vi a village on the east side. And this is actually the end of this one shot. As you have now been brought into and become a full member of this world. As this dwarf. Tela Iron kind of Helm. Um, so you are now happily within this and I'm actually going to change the music real quick in, <laughs> in the distance you do hear the village um, I'm just going to change it to a lighter music this is a lot of music that people use um, so you have successfully made it to the end um, the water um, was a trap it was more to set you to keep you there oh okay that little water thing um you did find every secret within what I wrote, um, which is awesome. Um, I do love that. Um, so tell me, how, what did you like and what did you not like about this adventure? Um, that's a good question. I think I liked most of it. It would have been good if there was a third uh, something circle. I was kind of expecting there to be a third, but... The water was a surprise. I thought there might be a secret third one behind the hole instead. Uh, the giant was stressful, but easier to kill than I thought it, it would be. The, I don't know if that's so, good or bad. Okay, so the way that I wrote it, um, if you didn't make the noise and pull the other creatures out, it would have been a lot harder of a fight. Um, a cave giant is a CR6. You're level 8. So you're oh. about on par with it. You're a little little stronger. And as a barbarian, you're the same as him, right? Like, you're basically the same class. So it was an evenly matched fight alone. But if you just went in there, it would oh, have been... Oh, was it you. originally supposed to be the seven... It was the Kobolds seven kobolds, the four mirror warrior, and the giant, all within that last room. Man, I had trouble just with the former part. <laughs> and by making the noise, you drew out all of the, the the minor creatures. Okay. Um, which drew it drew made it a bit longer, but allowed it to uh, finish up as well, um, and made the last fight easier. I got raided yeah, no, I, by one of the places I was watching. Awesome. Um, now, I'm going to find a place to raid because um, I have to go pick up Hermit. Um, I am going to raid into Dello, and then we can have a quick chat after and then set some things up. Um, Dello is working. It is running, so let's raid out. We're going to raid out. Stick around. Um, sorry, that's raid and raid two. If, if you are following me, use the first command. If you're not, I guess I should type the two. Use the second command. When we raid out, we are going to go raid Dello. Um, he is part of the... Uh, the streamers worldwide group that uh, I am the uh, one who manages um, along with all of our awesome uh, mods that make it so easy for me especially with my new job but yeah stick around get some more iron ore um, so later in the other 
runs. I'm doing another one next Sunday. Um, no, next Saturday. And then the Sunday I'm going to be on Play Nerd Allies. Um, but yeah, stick around. We're going to raid out. Thank you all for coming out. And uh, thank you for all the cheers and the bits. And uh, helping uh, Serpent Sun here get some more good rolls. Bye. There we go. I, I, that was.